Hey guys, I've finally gotten around to tackling the topic of how to get rid of grain lines. I've tried multiple methods and kept failing. I tried the water traps I covered in another video. While it did kill them in mass, it did not get rid of the issue for me. I reduced food and only gave enough to last a few hours. They just didn't work for me. I hadn't tried split pea flour. I probably should have, as it does seem to be effective according to a few credible sources. Since I hadn't tried it, and this was about a year and a half ago, I worked out my own way of doing it. But before we get into the video, I'd like to mention that I have a Facebook group that is slowly growing. Casey's Mealworms, Superworms, and Discoid Roach Knowledge Center. And join in on the discussion today. And with that out of the way, let's start the video. First things first, prevention. This will be quick, but to prevent a new outbreak in the future, and to potentially stop undoing your efforts of getting rid of them, you need to freeze your substrate for at least a few days to kill off any grain mite eggs that may or may not be there. If you always ensure you have freeze treated your substrate, you should not contract a grain mite infestation again. A regular home fridge with a freezer is enough to do the job. Let's move on to getting rid of them. The first step to getting rid of these guys is to contain them. We need to identify every bin, if we have multiple bins, that have the grain mite infestation. Start with removing the superworms from the infected substrate via sifter. Once this is done, I run a roughly one inch wide layer of Vaseline along the tops of the bins. This will stop the grain mites from getting out and spreading. Despite us removing the substrate, this isn't enough to get rid of them. We want to add back about one quarter inch substrate so that the superworms can consume it and create the substrate we will use to kill the grain mites. That is frass. You can replace the root bran with frass and speed up the process. Frass alone isn't the key, it's what we do with it in the following steps. Next, we purposely cause what I call a boom of grain mites. We want to add a moisture source. The first thing you might think to add is a veggie, right? Bad idea. We do not want to give the grain mites something they can eat. So what do we do? We mist the substrate with water. If your superworms haven't eaten all of the substrate yet, that is fine. Just be light on the water you add and keep any lids off the container so that we do not grow mold. The water will cause the grain mites to hatch. They will feed on the substrate if there is any, breed, and eventually die. We want to do this no more than once every two weeks. When you get to the point there is only frass remaining as substrate, we will start to see results. What we are doing at this point is causing the eggs to hatch while no food is available and causing them to not be able to reproduce due to lack of energy from starvation. They need more than just water. So if our substrate is frass, which they do not eat, and nothing else is available for consumption, the cycle will eventually wipe them out completely due to how we can purposely trigger their eggs to hatch instead of laying dormant by adding moisture every two weeks. Your superworms will drink the water you miss straight from the substrate, even if it's frass, so they will get what they need to survive while the grain mites will not. Keep repeating this step until grain mites stop appearing within two days of misting. Once you achieve this, we can move on to the very last step. Now I highly suggest testing whether or not they are gone. You can be pretty confident that they are once they stop appearing, but part of why I had them for around a year was because I botched my efforts with this method by not doing a test run to be absolutely positive they were gone. I restarted the infestation altogether. So, set up a small bin about the size of a butter tub, the same way we made our quarantine bins in the first step. Put some fresh substrate in the container and add superworms. Now take a few pinches of frass that we had our superworms in and add it to the container. Right now we are purposefully trying to cause an outbreak. We really, really need to know whether or not they are there, so we want to give them every opportunity. Now we want to miss the container like before. Keep an eye on this container for a few days, and if you do not see any grain mites appear, then you have successfully gotten rid of them. Remove the superworms from their previously infected bin into clean ones, and go back to your normal routine. To be extra safe, you may want to do this last step with several groups of superworms to be 100% certain they are gone. I did it over and over and over again before I was confident enough to add wheat bran and go back to regular feedings. I was being very, very cautious in my second attempt, which ended up working out after a few test groups. And there you have it guys, that is how I got rid of grain mites. It's unconventional and I really wish I had tried split pea flour, as it could have solved the issue for me a lot sooner and this video may not exist. But in case you cannot get it, do not want to try it, or for whatever reason do not use it, you can use this method. If you like this video and you have it in your critter loving heart, give this video a like, a subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more videos in the future like this. And as always, from the Gizzards and I, have a wonderful day.